I'm just gonna come out and say it. It's 100% okay for you to choose an espresso machine based on how it looks. Some people are drawn to the more commercial looking machines, while others choose based on the color or chrome, group head type, levers versus knobs, buttons versus paddles. It's hard to know what you may prefer until you get your hands on it yourself. Some think it's easier to operate machines that have joysticks and others prefer the knobs that spin open and close. Some like the manual feel of lifting a brew lever to stop and start a shot and others are okay with pressing a button. Ultimately, you just need something that can keep up with your lifestyle, fit your space, budget, and aesthetic. A few last things to consider or at least just be made aware of group head type and size, pump types, and consideration to other necessities in your overall budget. There are a few different group head types and sizes and a lot of differing opinions on what's best. There's saturated, semi-saturated, and E61. Saturated group heads are connected to the boiler. They're efficient at holding temperature and what you'll find on most commercial machines and on the GS3 and Rocket R91. Semi-saturated group heads are separated from the boiler by a heat exchange mechanism that directs water flow around the group head. Temperatures may be a little less stable, but they're easy to repair. The Luca A53, Profitec Pro 300, and Rancelio Silvia are all examples of a machine with a semi-saturated group head. E61 group heads are easily recognizable, as the portafilter sits outside of the machine and is connected to a brew lever that operates it. E61 group heads cycle water around the group as the shot pulls to maintain incredible temperature stability. They can also be connected to a flow control device. They're easy to maintain. The ECM Synchronica, Profitec Pro 700, and Lalit Bianca are all examples of E61 group heads. Each type has its pros and cons and has ways around temperature concerns and repairability. It's nice to know what you're getting, but it may not be at the top of your list of wants in a machine, and that's okay and probably for the best, unless you're just into the looks of one, which is also a-okay. Portafilter size or group head diameter is also something talked about in depth on the forums. God bless them. 58 millimeter is the standard commercial size. Many Breville machines are 54 and La Spaziale 53. You'll see these sizes range. It's important to know what you're buying so you can get the right accessories, but portafilter size isn't a reason to choose or stray from a machine necessarily. An 18 gram basket holds 18 grams, whether it's fit for a 53 or 58 millimeter portafilter. The smaller diameter, the deeper the basket. So if you were to pull a shot side by side with a 58 versus a 53, use the same dose and grind size, the 53 millimeter would pull a little slower because it takes longer for water to work through the group head. It's not a bad thing, it's just something to know. You can pull great shots with both. Don't choose a machine because it does or doesn't come with a 58 millimeter portafilter. There are many other reasons to choose a machine and you can get great shots with any size as long as you have the right tools. There are two types of pumps, vibratory and rotary. Vibratory pumps vibrate to move water through the machine, whereas rotary pumps use a large motor to rotate a gear-like mechanism that generates pressure. Some may argue that one's better than the other, but here are the basics. Vibratory pumps will last five to 10 years, depending on use. They're fairly inexpensive and they're easy to replace. Rotary pumps can last the lifetime of your machine. They're more expensive, increasing the overall cost of the machine, and in the off chance they go bad, you're looking at a little more spendy fix. Vibratory pumps are a little louder by nature, but pulling a shot of espresso takes about 30 seconds, so it's up to you how important that is. Personally, I wouldn't shot based on pump type, but they're usually associated with boiler type and water supply, which are worth considering. Lastly, and most importantly, honestly, save room in your budget for the two most important parts of your success with Home Espresso, a great grinder and a scale. 
You don't need to save a specific amount or percent of your budget on a grinder, but you will not get great tasting coffee, consistent results with pre-ground coffee or a bad grinder. It's better to get a less expensive machine with a better grinder than a more expensive machine with a horrible grinder. Keep an eye out for our guide on how to choose a grinder, but please, 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 please take this advice seriously. Most of our tech calls stem from bad grinders and old coffee. Finally, get an espresso scale. You need to measure how much coffee you're putting into your machine and how much you're getting out. A tenth of a gram of coffee makes a difference in how your shot pulls. It really is impossible to eyeball and get it right and taste great. So save room in your overall budget for accessories that will make coffee taste worth the investment in a home setup. You're not going to know how a machine feels until you pull shots on it. But our team has experience using every machine sold by Clyde and can answer any of your questions to help guide you to your perfect home setup. Feel free to leave comments or questions below, give us a call or reach out at hello at clivecoffee.com. Thanks for watching.